Okay, everybody. Settle in for uh, story time with Uncle Hen Da there. There was a wealthy old woman who was patron to a monk. And she took care of him for over 20 years. She built him a hut on her land. She fed him, took care of his needs. And one day she decided to find out what he had accomplished in all of those years. And this is an aside, but if you notice, in a lot of these stories, it's an old woman that ends up testing the monks. I don't know why that is, but pay attention. You'll notice it happens a lot. So she decides to test this monk and she finds a beautiful young woman who is described as being rich in desire. And she sends the young woman back to visit the monk and tells her to embrace him and see what he does. So the young woman goes back to the monk's hut and she comes in and she embraces him and she strokes him and she says, and now what? And the monk just stoically sits there. An old tree grows on a cold rock in winter. Nowhere is there any warmth. And so the young woman goes back to the rich old woman, she, she tells her what the monk had said and done. And the patron was very indignant and, and she said, to think that I have fed him for all these years for this, this is what he's accomplished. He need not have responded to your passion, but he should have had compassion for you. And she went back and she chased him out and burned down the hut. So he didn't, he didn't gain that much by all those years of sitting. Now, I, I told you that story to tell you this one. The first time I, I got to sit with the adults, I was so proud because that, that was a big day, man. That was, that, was, that was coming of age, you know? I was, I was gonna hang out and, and I was gonna be super Buddha, you know, because that's that's where it's all at. You gotta be the best, you gotta be the strongest, the best. And, and so, you know, we're not talking football, we're talking meditation. And so I was going to sit like a rock on top of a mountain, you know, like the statue in the shrine room. And so we, we go downstairs into the basement of the monastery and there's, there's rows of cushions and we sit down on the cushions and I, I jam myself down onto this cushion and I'm on the front third of it just perfectly and I squeeze my legs in, into a lotus pretzel of some kind and I form the, the perfect jhana mudra and I rock back and forth and settle myself. <sighs> And they close the door to this basement room and they turn out the lights and it's dark. And as my eyes start to adjust, all I can make out is that there's, there's a little bit of light filtering in around the doorway. And so I'm sitting there and, and I'm stilling all the inflamed passions of my mind and I'm sitting like, I'm not just the rock on the mountain, I am the mountain, I'm gonna be the mountain. And after an eternity, which was probably two or three minutes, my knees started to hurt. And at that point, I was glad that the room was very dark. And so I, I very quietly untangled my knees and, and just kind of sat cross-legged on my cushion, glad that nobody could see me fidgeting around. And then I sat. And after another eternity, as my mind was, was doing that thing, like when you just hold your thumb on the channel button on the remote control and it's just going click, 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 click. I, I thought of a, of a trick that they had told me to use, which was 
to envision a coin, a beautiful silver coin that's dropped into clear, gentle waters in the sunlight and the coin just twists and turns as it slowly falls through the water with the sunlight glinting off its surfaces until it settles on the sandy bottom. Except again, I'm totally unsettled. And so every time the coin settles on the bottom in my mind, I have to pick it up and drop it again because I can't deal with it just sitting there. I need movement. I need to be entertained in my mind as I'm using this trick to meditate. And so another eternity later, which, you know, probably at this point, I'm up to five or 10 minutes. I just want to leave. But I'm embarrassed. And all I can think about is what's my father going to say? What, what are the monks going to say? They've, they've allowed me to come down and sit with them. And I'm this foolish person and I can't even, I, I can't hold my posture. I can't get my mind to shut up. I'm, I'm a total mess. I'm a basket case and I just want to go, except there's one problem. We're in the dark. And if I get up and I go over to that door and open it, I'm going to be silhouetted in the door and everybody's going to know. So now I'm sitting there and I'm praying, please, someone else has got to go before me. Isn't there somebody else in here that's worse off than me? Somebody whose knees and, and back hurts, who can't shut their mind up, who can't sit still. And oh my God, my throat's dry and I want to clear my throat. I need a drink of water. Somebody's got to go, please. All oh, heavens, somebody else has got to go first, and then I'll go, and then it won't be so bad. I won't be, I won't be the guy that, that messed up. And so I'm sitting there, and I'm just praying. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm hoping. My, my entire universe is somebody else going before me, and finally, finally, somebody gets up and goes. So now I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, okay, how long is sufficient after the first one? Because... I, I don't want to just rush right out after that guy. I, you know, I want to make it look good before I humiliate myself. And so I'm sitting there trying to think about this. And that's what's going through my great calm meditative mind is, okay, is it long enough? Is it long enough? Yeah, finally, it's long enough. And so I get up and I, and I go over to the door and I open the door and I run upstairs and I go out into the garden and sit there on a bench. And I'm totally humiliated. I'm crushed. I'm sure they're going to come out and like, you know, drag me in front of everybody and, and tell me what a, what a basket case I am. And nothing happened, except after a while, everybody came up and they invited me in for tea. So where was I at there? Well, I was, I was busy trying to be the monk in that story. And I think that's a common thing with, with uh, practitioners. You know, we, everybody gets this idea, the, the, the stone Buddha sitting in perfect serenity with the perfect face and the perfect posture and, and just weathering all the storms of life and of mind. But that's not really how it is. It's messy in there. And part of sitting is dealing with the mess. And part of sitting is dealing with the physical discomfort and being aware, okay, is it just because I'm not used to doing this? Or is it because I'm really injuring myself and maybe I should just move and not try and be so, so proud about the whole thing? Part of the mess is realizing that we're all foolish human beings wandering around or we wouldn't need to sit. Now, the other part of the mess that I dealt with at that point was my total and complete lack of compassion. And that's the other mistake the monk made in that story. And with me, it wasn't some young lady. I was actually praying for somebody else to be so uncomfortable that they would leave first. I was actually forcing myself to suffer because of my stupid pride. There was no compassion anywhere there. There was no Buddha sitting. 
That was a foolish person sitting. So I'll, I'll share a verse from Hui Neng here that I, I think sums up the warning not to, not to sit like this. To still the mind and contemplate purity is a disease, not meditation. To sit all the time constrains the body and doesn't profit the understanding. Listen to my song. Alive, they sit, never resting. Dead, they rest, never sitting. With a bunch of stinking bones, how can you start your practice? <laughs>